This palace, located in Lhasa, Tibet, at an altitude of 3,700 meters, is currently the highest palace on Earth. It has stood on the Qinghai Tibet Plateau for over 1,400 years. Legend has it that the palace houses hundreds of tons of gold, as well as countless treasures and ancient Buddhist scriptures. It is a sacred place of Tibetan Buddhism and the residence of the spiritual leader, the Dalai Lama. It is said that the entrance to the mythical Tibetan holy land of Shambhala is located deep underground within the palace. In the year 618 AD, Namri Songsen, the 32nd king of the Yarlung dynasty, led his clan from their base in the Yarlung Valley to continuously conquer neighboring clans in the surrounding areas. After gaining control over the entire central region of Tibet, Namri Songsen was assassinated in a coup. This coup was believed to have been orchestrated by the enemies of the Tibetan Empire, the Zhengzheng Kingdom in the western Tibetan plateau, the Sumpa Kingdom in the northeastern part, and the collusion of the old aristocracy within the empire itself. They took advantage of the chaotic situation following Namri Songsen's assassination, hoping to overthrow the Tibetan Empire's rule. However, these rebels did not realize that they would soon face a great new emperor, who is still revered by Tibetans today as the Genghis Khan of Tibet. It is said that Songsen Gampo was born at Giyama in Meldro, a region to the northeast of modern Lhasa, the son of the Yarlung king Namri Songsen. The book The Holder of the White Lotus says that it is believed that he was a manifestation of Avalokitesvara, of whom the Dalai Lamas are similarly believed to be a manifestation. His identification as a Kakravartan and incarnation of Avalokitesvara began in earnest in the indigenous Buddhist literary histories of the 11th century. In the year 633 AD, Songsen Gampo, after suppressing domestic rebellions, relocated the capital of his newly unified kingdom from the Yarlung Valley to the Kichu Valley, which would later become the city of Lhasa. Due to its location on a plain, suitable for agricultural development, the Tibetan Empire transitioned from a nomadic society to an agrarian culture, gradually strengthening its national power. In 627 AD and 644 AD, the Tibetan Empire successfully defeated its two major enemies, Zhangzheng and Sumpa, respectively, thereby unifying Tibet. However, the rapidly expanding the Tibetan Empire soon encountered the Tang Dynasty to the east. The two countries engaged in a battle at Songzhou, which ended with heavy losses for the Tibetan Empire. In order to gain the support of the Tang Dynasty, Songtsen Gampo married the Princess Wencheng, a daughter of the Tang Emperor. The Old Book of Tang records that Songtsen Gampo thereupon built a city for the Chinese princess and a palace for her within its walls. According to Chinese sources, as the princess disliked their custom of painting their faces red, Lungstan, Songsen Gampo, ordered his people to put a stop to the practice, and it was no longer done. He also discarded his felt and skins, put on brocade and silk, and gradually copied Chinese civilization. He also sent the children of his chiefs and rich men to request admittance into the national school to be taught the classics. Legend has it that this palace was built on top of the Red Mountain Marpo Ri, located in the northwest of Lhasa. It consisted of three nine-story high buildings and housed over a thousand small palaces. On the left side of the mountain was Songsen Gampo's palace, while the top of the central palace featured a pagoda. On the right side of the mountain were the palaces where the emperor's family resided. There was a bridge made of silver and copper connecting Songsen Gampo and Princess Wencheng's palaces. The entire palace was painted white and stood tall on the Red Mountain, earning the name White Palace. However, the reign of power is not eternal.
In the 8th century AD, the empire began to collapse and disintegrate. This magnificent palace was destroyed by the ravages of war, and only two small chapels in the northwest corner remain to this day. One of them, Chogyal Drupuk, is a recessed cavern identified as Songsen Gampo's meditation cave. Since Songsen Gampo's palace was destroyed during the later period of the Tibetan Empire, when was the magnificent palace that stands before us now constructed? Let's begin with a title. Songsen Gampo had two foreign wives, Princess Brikuti from Nepal and Princess Wencheng from China. In Tibetan tradition, these two wives are credited with playing crucial roles in the adoption of Buddhism in Tibet and are considered the two great influences on Tibetan Buddhism. Over time, Tibetan Buddhism gave rise to four major schools, Nyingma, Kagyu, Sakya, and Gelug. In 1578 AD, the leader of the Gelug school, Sonam Gyatso, was granted the title of Dalai Lama by Altan Khan, the leader of the tombed Mongols. The name Dalai Lama is a combination of the Mongolic word Dalai, meaning ocean or great. The Dalai Lama is believed to be the reincarnation of Avalokiteshvara, and the title is passed on between different reincarnations. The greatest Dalai Lama in history is the fifth Dalai Lama, Ngawang Lobsang Gyatso. He was born into a prominent family of nobles with traditional ties to both Nyingma and Kagyu lineages and was the hereditary ruler of the region of Shigatse. The fifth Dalai Lama's most remarkable achievement was following in the footsteps of Songsen Gampo. He brought an end to the prolonged internal conflicts in Tibet and the military interventions by the Mongols, once again unifying Tibet. He was the first Dalai Lama to wield effective temporal and spiritual power over all of Tibet. In the year 1645, the fifth Dalai Lama, following the advice of his spiritual advisor Konchog Chofal, built a new palace between the Drapung Monastery and Sera Monastery on the site where Songsen Gampo's palace had been destroyed. The construction of the palace's exterior structure took three years, and in 1649, the fifth Dalai Lama relocated the government institutions to the palace known as White Palace. From that time onwards, White Palace became the winter palace of the Dalai Lama and the center of power for the entire Tibetan regime. Every year, just before the arrival of winter in October, the Dalai Lama would move the administrative institutions from Norbulinka, the royal garden where he spent the summer, to White Palace. They would remain there until the arrival of summer in May of the following year. The White Palace has a total of seven floors. It is named the White Palace because of its white exterior walls. The topmost floor is the Dalai Lama's sleeping quarters known as the Sunlight Palace. Part of the roof in the hall is open, allowing sunlight to enter, and it is covered with canopies at night, hence the name. The Sunlight Palace is divided into two parts, the West Sunlight Palace, which is the original section, and the East Sunlight Palace, which was later replicated. Both sections have a similar layout and serve as the sleeping quarters and places for handling administrative affairs of the 13th and 14th Dalai Lamas. This area has strict hierarchical levels and only high-ranking clergy and secular officials are allowed to enter. The hall includes a chapel, scripture hall, study room, bedrooms, and other lavishly decorated areas. The sixth and fifth floors of the White Palace are used for living quarters and offices. The fourth floor houses the largest hall in the White Palace, known as the East Great Hall. It is the largest hall in the White Palace, covering an area of 717 square meters with a length of 27.8 meters and a width of 25.8 meters. It houses the Dalai Lama's throne, which is adorned with a plaque inscribed with the words Jun Shi Sui Zhang, written by Emperor Tongji of the Qing Dynasty. Major events in the Potala, such as the Dalai Lama's enthronement ceremony and inauguration ceremony, take place in this hall. The exterior of the White Palace features a zigzagging path that leads up the mountain. On the eastern side of the halfway point, there is a spacious square that serves as a venue for the Dalai Lama to watch plays and hold outdoor activities. 
monastic schools are built on the north and south sides of the square. The White Palace is connected to the Jasha, which is located below the Red Palace. The Jasha, situated to the west of the Red Palace, serves as the residence for the monks who serve the Potala Palace. At its peak, it housed over 25,000 monks. Its exterior walls are also white and are thus considered part of the White Palace. It is worth mentioning that the walls of the White Palace are painted with a mixture that includes milk. Every year, shortly before the 22nd day of the ninth month in the Tibetan calendar, the walls of the palace are painted. The paint, made of milk, sugar, honey, herbs, and white lime, symbolizes the color of mercy associated with the White Palace. The fifth Dalai Lama passed away in the White Palace in 1682. Prime Minister Sangye Gyatso kept his death a secret for 13 years and oversaw the construction of the Red Palace to house the stupa of the fifth Dalai Lama. This expansion marked the largest scale expansion in the history of the Patala Palace. The construction involved not only local Tibetan craftsmen, but also 114 Chinese craftsmen sent by Emperor Kangxi of the Qing Dynasty and 184 craftsmen from Nepal. Renowned Tibetan stone masters, carpenters, wood carving masters, bronze masters, goldsmiths, metal engraving masters, casting masters, painting masters, clay sculpture masters, blacksmiths, and seamstresses all led their apprentices in the construction of the Red Palace. According to historical records, over 7,000 people labored on the Red Mountain every day. The shouts of the workers and the neighing of horses echoed through the air. In the year 1693, the construction of the Red Palace finally came to an end. The stupa of the fifth Dalai Lama, housed within it, gathered all the wealth of Tibet at that time. The stupa stands 12.6 meters tall and is entirely wrapped in gold, using over 5,000 kilograms of gold. It is adorned with countless rare treasures such as diamonds, rubies, emeralds, jade, pearls, and agate, showcasing extravagant luxury. The Red Palace is located at the center of the Patala, with red exterior walls. The palace follows the mandala layout and is surrounded by numerous scripture halls and Buddhist shrines built around the stupas of the successive Dalai Lamas, seamlessly connected with the White Palace. The main building of the Red Palace is the spiritual tower hall of the Dalai Lama. With a total of five, namely the 5th, 7th, 8th, the 9th, and the 13th. Each hall has the same shape, but the scale varies. Among them, the largest fifth Dalai Lama Pagoda Hall. The hall is three floors high, supported by 16 square columns, and the fifth Dalai Lama Pagoda is placed in the center, and the two sides are the 10th and 12th Dalai Lama Pagodas. The West Hall of the Fifth Dalai Lama Temple is the largest hall in the Red Palace, with a height of more than 6 meters and an area of 725.7 square meters. In the hall, the plaque of Yonglian Chudi, written by Emperor Qianlong of Qing Dynasty, is hung and the Dalai Lama's throne is placed below. The whole hall has 698 murals, most of which are related to the life of the fifth Dalai Lama. In the west of the Red Palace is the 13th Dalai Lama Tower Hall, built in 1936, and is the latest building of the Patala Palace. Its scale is comparable to that of the fifth Dalai Lama Spirit Tower Hall. In addition to the Spirit Tower, the hall is also dedicated to a silver statue of the 13th Dalai Lama and a Dharma object made of 200,000 pearls and coral beads. It is said that the Temple of the King of the Dharma and the Hall of the Saint in the Red Palace are all buildings left over from the Tibetan Empire period. The Fawang Hall is located in the center of the Patala Palace, and below it is the tip of Mount Marpo Ri. It is said that it used to be the retreat of Songsen Gampo, and now it is dedicated to the statues of Songsen Gampo, Princess Chizun, Princess Wencheng, and ministers. The roof platform of the Red Palace is covered with the golden roofs of the spiritual pagoda halls, all of which are single-ebbed mountain style, with wooden bucket arches to support the outer eaves and covered with golden copper tiles. At the top, there are three pagodas of one big and two small, which are golden and dazzling. The wall on the outside of the roof 
is made of a dark purple-red shrub, decorated with various gold decorations. There are huge gold-gold treasures and red prayer flags on the top of the wall, reflecting a strong Tibetan style. The two palaces, the Red Palace and the White Palace together are called the Patala Palace. The Potala Palace got its name from a hill on Cape Comorin at the southern tip of India, a rocky point sacred to the Bodhisattva of Compassion, who is known as Avalokitesvara, or Chenrezi. The Tibetans themselves rarely speak of the sacred place as the Potala, but rather as Peak Potala, Tse Potala, or most commonly as the Peak. The Patala Palace can be regarded as a museum of architectural art and Buddhist art. The Patala Palace contains 1,000 rooms, including assembly halls, stupa tomb halls, where the relics of the Supreme Lamas are preserved, shrines, prayer rooms, monks' dormitories, government offices and temples, as well as courtyards, 10,000 altars and 200,000 statues. Within the Patala Palace are bejeweled rooms, ornate murals, priceless treasures, underground labyrinths and dungeons, large decorative statues of Buddha, chapels decorated with human skulls and thigh bones, and the gold-covered stupas. The palace is still used for religious ceremonies and high-profile political events. The walls of all the palaces, temples, and corridors in the Patala Palace are adorned with murals, accompanied by various reliefs. The murals and sculptures are predominantly vibrant and colorful, depicting themes such as highland landscapes, historical legends, Buddhist stories, and scenes of the construction of the Patala Palace. They possess significant historical and artistic value. Every interior structure of the Patala Palace is adorned with colors, and important buildings such as halls and chambers are typically embellished with murals. Even living quarters have painted wall skirts and curtains. The wooden elements are intricately carved and adorned with vibrant colors. The murals cover a wide range of themes, including depictions of historical figures and events, religious myths, and stories from Buddhist scriptures. They also portray architectural scenes, folk customs, sports and entertainment, reflecting the vibrant aspects of life. The murals present a rich and diverse tapestry that showcases the history and charm of Tibet. Portraits of Tibetan figures such as the three Dharma kings of Tibet, the Dalai Lamas, the Panchen Lamas, Princess Wencheng, Princess Brikuti, and Sangye Gyatso, among others, hold significant positions in the murals of the Patala Palace. Integrating these prominent figures from Tibetan history into the palace's halls and chambers is a distinctive feature of Tibetan mural art. Murals depicting religious myths and stories from Buddhist scriptures often adopt a horizontal scroll format, linking each set of images together and unfolding horizontally. Each set of paintings typically features a large Buddha, or Bodhisattva, as the central figure, surrounded by interspersed Buddhist narrative scenes resulting in meticulously composed compositions. The murals depicting architectural themes offer glimpses of the construction scenes during the building of important monasteries and palaces such as Jokong Temple, Sera Monastery, and the Patala Palace. They also showcase the spectacular views of temples from various regions of Tibet. The main halls of the Patala Palace are adorned with carved beams and painted rafters, radiating a resplendent golden brilliance. The decorative patterns include motifs of clouds, swirling vines, interlaced branches and leaves, auspicious flowers, lotus flowers, pomegranate blossoms, dharma wheels, Sanskrit mantras, the eight auspicious symbols, as well as various plant patterns featuring Buddha images, lions, elephants, and more. Both carving and painting techniques are employed. The carving techniques include both bas-relief and semi-circular carving, with some patterns pre-carved and then affixed to beams, pillars, brackets, and arches. The color palette consists of warm hues such as vermilion, deep red, gold, and orange as the base colors, complemented by cooler tones dominated by blue and green. The colors are vibrant, creating a strong contrast. Of all the treasures collected in Patala Palace, sutras are the ones Buddhist scholars are most interested in. 
The sutras are rich in content, and most of them are the only existing copies. Among all sutras in the palace, the colorful Teng Yur is the most precious. Teng Yur, along with Kang Yur, makes up the Tibetan Buddhist canon. Kang Yur consists of works supposed to have been said by the Buddha himself, while Teng Yur is a collection of commentaries to his teachings. It is both a cultural masterpiece and an exquisite work of art, written in ink made of gold, silver, coral, iron, green diamond, red copper, white conch shell, and pearl dust. Each line is written in one of seven colors. Tenka are Tibetan Buddhist scroll paintings. Usually mounted on colorful silks, Tenka vary in styles and cover subjects in religion, medicine, astronomy, arts, and architecture. They have become important historical materials for the study and research of Tibetan cultures. Potala Palace has more than 10,000 tanka, which are housed in a 340 square meter warehouse. On the 30th day of the second month of the Tibetan calendar, two tanka are exhibited for the faithful to worship. The sculptural art of the Patala Palace combines Buddhist art techniques from China, India, Nepal, and other regions. The palace houses a large number of precious sculptures. There are colorful clay sculptures, wood carvings, and stone carvings. But the most abundant are the metal statues made of gold, silver, bronze, iron, and other metals. These artworks are exquisitely crafted, with some reaching heights of over 10 meters, while others are as small as a few centimeters. For example, statue of Marisi. Marisi, the Buddhist goddess of light, appears sitting on an open lotus on the back of a boar. The gold statue was a royal artwork of the Ming dynasty. It measures 29 centimeters tall, and each of Marisi's eight arms holds a Buddhist instrument, while her three faces indicates the original looks of the goddess. The goddess's upper body is decorated only with a glittering necklace. The statue is regarded as a perfect match of Han and Tibetan Buddhist arts, and was exhibited at the Forbidden City in 1992. The statue of Akala Vajra was made in the 15th century and measures 26 centimeters tall. Akala Vajra was a Buddhist warrior who is believed to be the reincarnation of the angry Metukpa. In this statue, he raises a sword over his head with his right hand and wraps a Vajra rope around his left arm. His lower body and kneeling position suggest that he is prepared to jump to fight at any time. The statue of Guanyin, a Buddhist goddess of mercy, is a 10th century work made of red copper with gilding and measures 32 centimeters tall. The goddess sits cross-legged with a solemn and peaceful appearance, showing the great mercy of Guanyin in a vivid way. On the top of its crown is Amitabha, the Buddha of infinite light. The seated statue of King Songtsen Gampo. Songtsen Gampo was the first emperor of a united Tibet, established in 7th century. He created the Tibetan written language. He was also a strong proponent of Buddhism, and was regarded as the reincarnation of the Buddhist saint Avalokiteshvara. The statue of Songtsen Gampo measures 38 centimeters tall. Sitting on a round cushion in deep meditation, Songtsen Gampo is clothed in a large robe with lapels and wears a wrapped hat on top of which hides a small statue Amitabha, the characteristic image of Songtsen Gampo. The Potala Palace was designated a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 1994. In 2000 and 2001, Jokong Temple Monastery, the exceptional Buddhist religious complex, and Norbalinka, the Dalai Lama's former summer palace, were added to site which is now known as the historic ensemble of Patala Palace. According to UNESCO, the historic ensemble of Patala Palace is an outstanding work of human imagination and creativity for its design, its decoration, and its harmonious setting within a dramatic landscape. The three-in-one historic ensemble of Patala Palace, with Patala the Palace Fort Complex, 
Norbulinka, the garden residence, and the Yokong Temple Monastery, the temple architecture, each with its distinctive characteristics, forms an outstanding example of traditional Tibetan architecture. The historic ensemble of Patala Palace forms a potent and exceptional symbol of the integration of secular and religious authority. The scale and artistic wealth of the historic ensemble of Patala Palace, which represents the apogee of Tibetan architecture, make it an outstanding example of theocratic architecture, of which it was the last surviving example in the modern world. Oh, my God.